fresh and all those areas. Some of us may feel that ah, I'm single you now. What has marriage got to do with me? Yeah. All right. Oh, it's got a lot to do with you. All right. Okay. Uh, some of us may say, oh, uh, and now we are closing the retirement. Uh, why another? Why talk about marriage again? You know. And so uh, I know my wife so well already. <coughs> <laughs> After being married for 25 years, there's a man who was asked about the secret of his success in, in, in marriage, you know, in staying married for 50 years. And he said this Well, I brought my wife gold. I bought my wife nice baju, I took her to fancy restaurants, and at our 25th wedding anniversary, I brought her on a tour to KK, yeah, and uh, ended up at Mount Kinabalu. Wow, romantic, isn't it? <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and his friends said, okay, now what are you going to do at your 50th anniversary coming up? I said, oh, at our 50th anniversary, I will go back to Mount Kinabalu and pick her up there. <laughs> <laughs> Pat and I will be celebrating our 25th anniversary this 19th of May. Uh, <laughs> this has been a long journey. <laughs> a joyful journey. A journey full of surprises. But one of the things I'm very grateful for is the fact that before we got married, you know, our pastor, at the time was Pastor James Cook, you know, sat down with us in his office where I'm sitting now and uh, took us through six sessions of counseling to prepare us for marriage. And one of the passages we we studied together was from Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 to 25, which I'll take you through a little bit today. Okay. Now, but you see, we prepare for life, our education, for our career. We spend 20 plus years preparing for education and for our work. But when it comes to marriage, we spend six weeks preparing for a lifetime together. <laughs> Is it any wonder why we sometimes struggle? Yeah. Okay. As a pastor today, you know, I still use this material, but of course, uh, over the years, I've added to it with uh, experiences with the Word of God and other things. You know? And as a pastor, my policy is, if anyone uh, invites me you know, to ask me to conduct a wedding, this is the first condition that you must go through pre-marriage counseling. Because I want to, uh, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years down the line, I want to see you and your spouse still living happily ever after? <laughs> Is there such a thing as a marriage man in heaven? Pop quiz. Is there such a thing as marriage man in heaven? Some say yes, huh? Okay. Those who say yes, sorry to disappoint you because Jesus said no. <laughs> Jesus himself says that at the resurrection, all right, no matter how lovey-dovey you are in a, as a husband and wife, you know, when you get to heaven, sorry, okay, you are now brothers and sisters in the Lord. Okay? <laughs> For some, it will be a relief. <laughs> For others, it will be a sad day. That's why the Bible says that Jesus will wipe every tear from their eye. <laughs> People will neither marry or be given in marriage. Okay? They will be like the angels in heaven. Okay? 
So take it as you as you as you wish. That's taken in Matthew 22 verse 13. But at one time, the Bible records in Genesis 2 that there was a marriage met in paradise. If you have a Bible, I invite you to turn to your Bible, you know. If you have an iPad you know, or a handphone, want to take notes, do so. But uh, again, I invite you to turn off into silent mode so that uh, the calls or things like that will not interrupt you. Genesis 2, verse 18 to 25. Next slide, please. It says, Now the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. And now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky, and he brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was his name. Verse 20. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds of this in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. I'd like to invite you to read now uh, from verse 21. Let us all read together from verse 21. So, the Lord God And the divorce rate was zero okay. percent. Some someone said, you know, a bit of a cynic said, of course, Adam and Eve had a perfect marriage. He didn't have to hear about all the men she could have married, <laughs> and she didn't have to hear you know, how much better his mother can cook. <laughs> but unfortunately, you know, that picture, you know, of perfection was marred. Was you know, was interrupted by the entry of sin. Disobedience to God brought sin. Okay? And since then, comes all the problems that we as a family, we as husband and wife, face. Because when we get married, we are marrying a sinner. Okay? All right? Okay, look at your spouse and say, hello, sinner. <laughs> and if your spouse say, call back and say, hello, sin. A sage. <laughs> All right. Thankfully, by God's grace, you, know, you have been redeemed, right? Okay. From sinner, you have become a saint in God's estimation, in God's eyes. Isn't that wonderful? So you both, as you enter into a relationship, understand both of this aspect. Because otherwise, we're going to get very, very disappointed. In the U.S., it was recorded in the last, uh, from, uh, from 1960 onwards, right? Until the year 2000, the divorce rate has risen over 700%. Okay? 1960, there was 393,000 divorces. And uh, in 2000, around 2000, there was 1.2 million per year. Malaysia has not done well as well. The Malay Mail on the 3rd of March 2014, it says that the number of divorces in Malaysia, next slide, okay, has risen, has, has doubled in just eight years from the year 2004, from 14% to an alarming 26% in 2012. By the time we finish, this message, we will have six divorces already. The marriage is breaking down every 10 minutes. 
That is what the statistics say. Under the Mus in the Muslim community, uh, there was 20,916 divorces in 2004. From 19%, it rose to 32% in 2012. That was the year of the census. It's very hard to get uh, statistics from Malaysia. Uh, so, in the, uh, for non-Muslims, it rose from 5% to 14%. That's staggering. Okay? Even though, in terms of numbers, it does not seem to be as high, okay? the actual numbers, as, as Muslims. How do we counter this? Is it because of the attitudes over the years? or the influence by popular culture that has cheapened the value or devalue marriage. I pray that in the next uh, 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so, we will look back at the blueprint that God has for us. And as you think about your marriage, for those who are married, as you think about your parents' marriage, as you think about your future marriage, you're going to have this becomes a, a measuring guide, okay, a template for you to match against. And like anything, if you've got a good template, you know where you're going wrong, okay, and where you need to do the correction. Don't wait until they say. Wait until I have a, uh, I'm married, then I change. By that time, you are in a world of hurt already. Okay? It's too late. Okay? Even if, for those who have been married, for myself, 20, 25 years, for those, 50 years, you know, uh, and, and so on, there is still room for improvement. Even if you think that, okay, I'm, I'm okay already, you know, uh, uh, I'm quite secure, then, Use this template to bless the younger ones who come into, you know, as you minister to them. When Jesus was asked about the tricky problem of divorce, he could have said a lot of things. He could have condemned, you know, all those who are, who are in that situation. But he, in his wisdom, directed people, his questioners, back into God's blueprint. In Matthew 19, verse 46, he says, Haven't you read? Haven't you read? He replied, that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one. Male and female. In U.S., in U.K., in many other uh, Western countries, gay marriage is becoming the norm, right? Okay. For us, we cannot, in this area, we cannot be politically correct. We have to be biblically correct. Make it clear. Okay? Make it clear. Be very clear. Shops, Christian business businesses are being punished. Pastors were being called up by the mayor of a particular city in the US right, because of their stand for the biblical standard of marriage. And then the mayor requested the pastors for their sermons. And for this, the pastors are very happy to write their sermons in. <laughs> okay, and they send in all the pastors who are, you know, who send in all the sermons to be read, and and and, and of course you don't want to say that, all right? Okay, and do by the mayor. There is a way that comes against you and your marriage and your family. We have to be strong and stand up against it. See, marriage is God's idea in the first place. He said that it is very good. Verse 18, 
He says this, the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. My apologies, uh, a bit light in the line of preach. Yeah? The Lord shows his concern for Adam. The Garden of Eden was a beautiful place okay? where there was peace, there was harmony, you know, and everything was there. And for, for six times when God created the light, spoke uh, the earth and the seas into being, the trees, the sun and moon, and so on and so forth, all the animals, six times he said, it is good. But there's one time, he said, it is not good, after the sixth time. He said, it is not good for man to be alone. God is concerned for Adam. The God who is concerned for Adam is still the God who is concerned for you today. You may be single, you may be separated, you know, uh, your spouse may have passed away. Yeah. He's concerned for your well-being, for your loneliness. Yeah. So when God looked at his handiwork, he declared it all good until he looked at Adam. Adam had no counterpart. The word alone carries the idea of being cut off or being a piece which is isolated from the whole. God placed the lonely in the family. You know? It's so important. We are saved by, by our faith, by grace, by faith in Christ alone. But for us, from salvation onwards, in our sanctification, we are not called to walk alone. Right? That sounds like a, a theme or a song from a football team. Right? A football team. Okay? You don't walk alone. Okay? You are placed in the family of God. Yeah? If you are a new Christian today, or a young Christian, never, never isolate yourself from the family of God. Okay? You may have disagreements, you may have uh, 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 some misunderstandings, but never, never isolate yourself. For those of us, who, I mean all of us have family. Never, even though you, you don't see eye to eye with your parents, we don't see eye to eye with your brothers or sisters, never cut them out. God place the lonely in families. Your family is the first avenue where God provides a cure, if I can call it, for your loneliness. Do you see it? Have you closed your heart? You know? And we resent, have been remained carry a, a resentful spirit all this while. Maybe against someone in your family or close ones. By the way, just in case those of us who are single uh, get the wrong idea, no. It is not always God's will for everyone to be married, right? Jesus was not married, okay? Yeah? Uh, despite, of, despite, uh, despite of what the Da Vinci court uh, tried to play, right? Okay. Jesus is not married. He himself said that there are those who choose to live like eunuchs, right? In Matthew chapter 19, for the sake of the kingdom of God. It is a gift. They can accept it. Okay? Those who, the one who can accept this should accept it. Okay? And I think Brother Terrence uh, will be speaking about singleness uh, in, in, uh, in the message, all right? So, if you have any questions, start asking him, right? Yeah. Uh, so that he can prepare his message. Paul says, I wish that all of you were as I am, but each of you has your own gift from God. One has this gift, and another has that. You know? He was free to preach the gospel. And that was the gift of singleness. So, the Lord concluded, when he saw the need, the Lord concluded this. He says, I will make the old King James Version says, I will make a help meet okay, for Adam. Okay? The word help says the one who comes alongside to assist the person to achieve his goal. Okay? It's the idea of a one who is like a, the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit, the, the comforter, the, the paraclete, yeah? the one who comes alongside you. Okay? 
The word meet here means the one who is suitable, who is correspond. It's not just anybody. Right? Young people, you know, our singles. Don't just pick anybody off the street, yeah, and say, okay, will you be my husband? You know? Okay? Or will you be my wife, you know? I look at this person and say, wow, so attractive, but they must be like, huh? Okay, this is my prince charming already. <laughs> okay? No, okay. There is you know, we need to spend time to understand this person. Okay? As you grow and mature, you move from infatuation to reality. Yeah? Amen? Okay. Don't just gaze into each other's eyes and think everything is fine. You know? okay. yeah. People say go uh, go into marriage with uh, both your eyes open. Yeah? But when you are in marriage, have one eye closed. Okay? <laughs> Alright? But you evaluate. Yeah? Your potential partner. Okay? Don't let yourself just be ruled by emotions. Help me. Okay? The husband and wife are to complement one another. Men, you know, I don't know about the, uh, the rest of the men, but I find it difficult to do, you know, uh, more than one thing at one time. Okay? I'm a serial, you know kind of things that uh, I do this. I cannot eat and talk at the same time. <laughs> okay. And and the interesting part that I notice is uh when we have men's fellowship, right? When we eat we're silent. Okay. <laughs> Most of the time. Okay. Unless the person is not eating then you talk and the rest of us listen. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, Oh, by the way, just in case uh, for us uh, of the men who want to join the men's fellowship, you know, uh, brother, he is there, right? Okay, yeah, he's a he's a coordinator of our men's fellowship. Right? That's a, yeah, and he calls us for makan, you know, uh, once a month. Yeah, and we're a good fellowship. And we're going to do a Bible study also together. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Women, on the other hand, you know. Can use both sides of the brain, you know, right brain and left brain. You know? If I I use the right side, you know, the brain and this one I function, you know, I shut it down, I'm blank already, alright? But the woman can do both sides, you know. So they're firing on all cylinders. Okay? If I want to think about it in, in today's tech terms, you know, it's like uh, your handphone, you know. Uh, for the man it's single call, alright? For the woman it's octa call. You know? Okay, multi processing. Okay. Alright? Okay. And that's what God, in His wisdom, puts the woman alongside the man to help us. Okay? So never treat your wife, for us guys, you know, as the weaker person. He's a, uh, to be a helper means you need the strength, you know, and the patience, and the perseverance, the long suffering, you know, yeah? the love, whatever, then the wisdom, how to make sure that our ego is kept. <laughs> Unpunished. <laughs> All right. That's the wisdom of the world. And why I discovered this? Sometimes when you talk, when you talk and, and things like that, and we are talking on one subject, and suddenly my wife can bring up an totally unrelated subject. So when you so careful, okay? Then I realize that yeah, she must have been firing on that one as well. You know, processing that one and suddenly it comes out. Is it? All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, young people, you tell me whether it's true or not, okay? Between the guys and the girls, yeah? okay. right. So, the idea is this. God creates women and men as complementary to one another. Accept that, okay? When you marry, you know, you're, for the guys, you're not marrying a husband, okay? You're marrying a wife, okay? A woman, okay? For the women, you're not marrying another lady, right? You're marrying a man, okay? Totally different, okay? But complementary. Find out. Use that time, you know? Of friendship to find out whether you can match. Secondly, we can see that when God identifies uh, 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 His intention, we can see how He intervenes, right? And uh, from verse 19 to 22, follow it with it in your Bible, it says, The Lord formed out of the ground, all the wild animals. He brought all the animals for Adam to check him out, to name it. And poor Adam went through, went through, went through. I said, hey, something is happening here. Okay? Okay, something is happening here. You know, I'm just not doing the scientific, scientific, uh, scientific work, you know, labeling and giving names to all these animals. 
But one of them have a pair. Hey, what about me? <laughs> okay, what about me? Okay. So, God awakened his desire. Okay. It's a desire shaped by God. Uh, next, next slide, please. It's a desire shaped by God, and He awakened the desire for companionship. All right, uh, in Adam for companionship. Parents. Yeah. Okay, I can't. Sorry, I can't resist this. Okay. Single, married, complicated in the relationship and engineering. Okay. Okay, um, forever alone. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Hey, by the way, you know, I still today, in the 25 years, I, I'm still amazed why and, how, and uh, I'm still puzzled at why a uh, 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 bad you know, uh, accepts me. <laughs> She's not here. Okay. <laughs> uh, man, uh, I'm a total nerd. Uh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. The only language I can speak is computer language. Uh. <laughs> How to talk with a woman? Uh, okay, engineering. Okay, that's close to my heart. Okay, so it's a desire shaped by God, you know, and it's a desire that helps us to be interested, you know, in the opposite sex. And we can cultivate that in a healthy manner. I think our church you know, environment pro should provide that. Okay? Our leaders, our youth leaders, uh, and I, you know, in you know, is you need to keep them. Uh, they need to keep aware to be aware of what's going on in our youth. Okay, yeah? and then we, our young adults as well. And so the other day, I, I had a, an exercise with the with the. Uh, Young adults to talk about boundaries in dating, you know, and those who are not don't have, uh, who are not in any steady relationship, you know, in any relationship, I send them out on a date, okay, all right, I send them out on a date, yeah, and uh, and tell them about how to conduct themselves properly in a date, yeah, okay, dating ethic, all right. For example, the guys when you turn up to the house, don't sit in the car and horn. You know? <laughs> Very uncool, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's a big fail. Okay, you gotta call it this way. You know, be a gentleman, get out of your car, you know, walk to the door, knock on it, you know, ring the bell. If your parents are home, good, okay, introduce yourself to them, okay? Yeah, be prepared, you know? Yeah, things like this. Okay. They're not the relationship. Yeah, it's a desire, okay? So, Secondly, we find that God actually satisfied the desire okay, by creating woman. Okay? God will not awaken a desire or God will not surface a need without having the ability and the willingness to meet that need in your life. What it applies, I mean, to marriage, to your area of loneliness, it can apply to anything. It's the same confidence I have. You know, when God gives us the vision to build the sanctuary, it's the same thing. Ordinarily, we will not think about it. I mean, we're happy where we are. Yeah? Okay? But God gives us a vision larger than ourselves. And that's why we trust it. And He provides. You know, over the last seven years, He provides. He provides the leadership. Provides the resources, it provides the wisdom, the people, the encouragement, you know, the prayers. Churches are praying together with us. This coming Thursday, we're going to host a pastor's fellowship here. And it'll be the last time, and I'm glad, you know, for some reason, again, it's a season that God says, you know, uh, says, okay, Piazza Baptist Church hosts the pastor's fellowship. I said, fantastic, okay? This will be the last week you know, before, you know. Uh, before we meet again and, uh, in the last pastor's fellowship, and then I'm going to invite them to pray okay, for the church. We're going to do a prayer walk as well. Okay, together. Next Sunday, by the way, okay, at the end of the service, I'm going to invite us to lay hands together around the, as, as, as much as we can stretch around the compound. I'm going to pray together. Amen? 
pray for God to really move you know, uh, in this project. I'm so excited about it. Okay. I know that uh, some of us have to work extra hard. You know? All right? We'll tell you more. But God will satisfy uh, your needs. Okay? God will satisfy your needs. There's one problem that we must avoid. Is that don't go your own way. Don't awaken, you know, uh, songs of songs, chapter 2 verse 7, and repeated again, 3 verse 5, 8 verse 4. It says, daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you by the gazelles and the doors of the field. All right. Okay, very poetic, right? It says, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. There is a time and place, there is a time and season, okay, uh, for, for, uh, for marriage in your life. And the time and season for that is not in your high school. Uh, pastor, not cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. When it comes to, to, to university days, it, you, it, you can start, okay? All right. But still not the time. <laughs> oh. How come everybody is pointing to Samantha? <laughs> When you're coming out, okay, and now it's, it's a time, all right? It is time for you to begin to explore relationships, but nothing serious. Okay? There's a time and season. When you come up to work, ah, the next stage, when you begin to establish, because later on you will see marriage involves responsibility, okay? There are three things that it involves, all right? When you see God acting on, on, uh, on uh, Adam's behalf, you see? First, it involves sleep. You know, he caused Adam to go to sleep, and he did his surgery. Okay, all right. It involves surgery. Okay? Sleep means you rest. Okay, and God has to work. You don't have to be so anxious at a certain po at your point in your life, right? To the point you lose sleep about your future partner. Yeah. So sleep. Let God uh, do the work. You know, He'll prepare the other person. He knows what is good for you. He created you. You are fearfully, wonderfully made, strangely made sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. God knows, you know. So let him do the work. Don't rush it. Okay. Yeah. You ever try, you know, to to to, to hatch an egg, you know, and then before the egg, the chicken is come out already. You crack the egg. Yeah. Okay. Not pretty side. Okay. All right. So trust God to bring the person into your life, but keep your eyes open. All right. All right. <laughs> Okay. It involves surgery. You know, it opens up, you know, right? Those who have gone through surgery, when you are asleep, surgery no pain. You know? When you wake up, great pain. Okay? <laughs> okay. It means that after you exchange your vows, you know, ah, the pain begins. Right? <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. By the way, there's a doctor and a civil engineer and a computer programmer who are arguing about what is the oldest profession in the world. You know? And the doctor said, oh, in the Bible, you see? Ah, God performs surgery, right? So that must be, I have the oldest uh, profession in the world, I have the oldest job in the world. Yeah? Okay? But the civil engineer said, no, 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 no. Even earlier in Genesis 1, you see, it says, God created the order of the heavens and earth from out of chaos. Ah, hey, that's a civil engineer's job. <laughs> oh, no. hey, sorry, my friend, you know, uh, but my doctor friend, sorry, I have the oldest uh, profession in the world. The computer programmer, uh, back there, said, huh? you know, God created the heavens and earth from out of the chaos. You know who created the chaos? Those of you who are computer programmers know what that is. Okay. All right. You you ever seen behind a programming? You know what a programming uh, code is like. You know it's like chaos. Eh? Okay. In most pain. Some of the pain means our struggle. Our struggle to fight for our marriage. There will be disappointments. There will be conflicts. Okay. This is not the time I will deal with conflicts in, you know, uh, in marriage. But in our pre-marriage counseling, I do that. You know? I take the couple through how to handle conflicts. The times we say, you know, uh, there are four reactions to conflicts. Yeah? One is say, I win. Okay? 
or my way. Okay. Another one say, no way. You know? All right. Another one say, okay, lah, your way. Lah. Okay. But the best one is our way. Okay. Begin to see yourself as a unit. You cannot break it in two. It involves symbolism. Uh, Matthew Henry, you know, said this when when God uh, he, and he said when God took the rib from uh, from from Adam's side, he said this. Eve was made by God, not out of Adam's head to rule over him, nor out of his feet. Sorry, my 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 having mistake. To be trampled upon him, uh, to, to be trampled by him, but out of his side to be equal with him, from under his arm to be protected, and from near his heart to be loved. Wow, a theologian can say this. Okay. I, th I thought it was a poet. You know? From near his heart to be loved. In your search for a marriage partner, do you recognize the quality of what I'm saying? Do you recognize the quality in your spouse? Or in your spouse to be, you know, in your current boyfriend, you know, or girlfriend, you just see that quality. Then you can do it as a check mark. Yes, okay. Yes, check. You know, uh, hundred more points to go, but at least two more. At least check. Okay. All right. Do that. Okay. Do that. Remember, you're preparing for a relationship to live with somebody for life. Okay. And third, final point is this. See how God's invention. God invented marriage. Okay, the church did not. Okay? The church did not. Okay, the state did not invent marriage. Marriage comes from God's mind, okay? and that is His invention. Okay? The three aspects. First, it involves a response. Okay, when Adam in verse thirty-three woke up from his sleep, he says, "You know, whoa, you know, whoa." Oh no, my bones! I hear, I still hear the Eugene's uh, voice. Oh no, my bones! Flesh of my flesh! You know? That kind of response, that overwhelming love, yeah, and response. And uh, I like to invite Zach to, uh, to I don't know whether you're ready or not, you know, to show a, a short one minute clip if you can. You know? Our groom's reaction, or a couple of groom's reaction, when you see the bride. Thank you very much. Yeah? Thanks, sir. Sometimes we forget how beautiful. Yeah? 
Pastor Faith has learned. How beautiful our wives look on the wedding day. But over the years, we can grow to take them for granted. We expect them to be our servant. We forget that they are so precious. They waited and entrusted their lives to us. They are leaving their parents. Everything, their world of security. And they are coming out of the room. Men, speaking to the guys here, whether you are married, you get to be married, you have such a wonderful privilege, responsibility, and words, you know, and I'm not for words. What God, the treasure that God has placed this life into your life. Never take our spouse for granted. Involves that responsibility. To live means a lot of things. To live for the husband, for the man and his wife is to begin to cut off, put other priorities, okay? put other priorities, other, sorry, other things, your job, your, uh, even church, okay, you know, the, the, you know hearing from pastor, church, okay, you know, a secondary priority to your marriage. When you get if you're going to get married, you must understand where each other's priority is. Okay? If a person chases after you just because you're playing hard to get, okay? just as a trophy, right? I can tell you, after marriage, you'll be a trophy that's left on the shelf. And he or she will pursue after everything. May God have helped each one of us, especially our young people, who have the wisdom to see this, the discernment to see this. To see the heart, to see the intent of a person's heart. Just a responsibility. To leave, put other things in secondary. To cleave means to be bound together. To the point whereby the New Testament, sorry, the Old Testament, uh, meaning says to stick like glue, to be welded together so much so that any attempt to separate, right, will cause serious damage to both parties. And it's a process of being welded together more and more over the years. God gives us one simple command. Talking about sex. Within the four walls of the marriage, sex is a beautiful thing. Because it brings about the bonding, the soul time, okay? uh, between the man and the soul. Okay? But if you do that, if you have sex outside the boundaries of marriage, you are joining yourself to another person and that ultimately is going to tear you apart. So please, young people who are not married, don't go the wrong direction. Live sex for marriage, it is considered pure, holy. God gives you sex as a gift as your wedding gift. Don't open it before your wedding night. Amen? 
marriage involves that kind of righteousness. And this is where I want to close. Do not be misled by this world and its twisted definition of what marriage and sex means. Do not allow the ways of the world to cheapen you, to take away your values, your godly values, to cheapen your relationship with another person. Hebrews 13 verse 4 says, Marriage should be honoured by all, the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexual So with this, Knowing that marriage is designed by God, it's designed for your protection, it is designed for your pleasure, it is designed for procreation. I pray that you continue to uphold the value and the preciousness of your marriage relationship. If you are not married, pray for the married couple. Pray for your parents in their marriage. Because the danger is after the children fly, you know, okay? okay? Fly the coop, you know, and you're left with two, two persons in the home. If we are not, not careful, we can grow apart over the years of raising the children, of having you know, they involved in um, even ministry or businesses or whatever it is in your career. Never allow that to come to your team. So pray. Pray for your leaders' marriages. Satan loves to attack leaders. Pray for yourself. And God will bless you with the wow person, okay. the one who compliments you, the one that you can say, yes, I can fully trust him or her for now. Amen? Amen. Shall, we, shall we stand together? We've been uh, sitting for quite a while. We've been very patient. We invite the worship team to come forward and we close in our worship. I think we sing that simple song, I love you Lord. You and I, my dear friends, I consider the bride of Christ. I think it's appropriate this morning to express our love to you. And as you stand, as you worship, just offer your prayers to God. You know, it's okay to sing and worship together. Yeah, this one, right?